Hey there, it's your boy Foxy, back for more relationship stories. Update. I, 29 male, caught my wife, 27 female, letting our male neighbor rub lotion on her pregnant stomach. Original post. This literally happened this morning. I'm posting it here and hoping to vent and maybe get some perspective because I've been extremely upset all day and can't process this productively. My wife is 8 months pregnant with our child. We live next to another married couple who are in their late 30s. I don't like the guy. I've found him to be invasive and the weird type of friendly that almost seems to be prying and clingy. I'm not sure if that's clouding my judgment here or if this validated my beliefs about him. I left for work but decided on the way there that I just wasn't feeling it and called off. I stop for breakfast before heading home to surprise my wife. 40 minutes tops. I get home, enter from the back door, and there's my wife and my neighbor sitting in our living room on the couch. She's turned toward him, fully clothed, but with her shirt pulled up over her very pregnant stomach, while he, facing her, is rubbing lotion on her stomach with both hands. They both froze before my wife asked how come I was back, and then said neighbor stopped by to borrow the toolbox while I was moisturizing, and wanted to know if he could feel the baby, so I said okay. I told him to get out before I put him out, and he left immediately. I tried to stay calm and talk to her and get the whole story. Neighbor's wife is apparently infertile, which is the first time I heard of it, which is amazing considering the guy never shuts up about his personal woes, and that he wanted to feel the baby. That's her story, and she's sticking to it. That's not good enough for me. My thought process is that there's a big freaking difference between feeling a baby for 10 seconds, and coming into our home and rubbing lotion on my wife's stomach. If it was some close friend of ours I might understand, but I dislike the guy and my wife has never expressed any sort of closeness to him aside from passing pleasantries, and she's not the type to let anyone she isn't close to put their hands on her. So, in the span of a day, the guy goes from being a distant acquaintance of hers at best, to her deciding to invite him in and let him rub her. I also find it convenient that he showed up that early, right after I went to work, very shortly after his own wife also left for work. And he's never came over asking to borrow anything of mine before, yet 9.30ish in the morning, and he urgently needs a toolbox. I don't believe my wife, and this is the first time my trust in her hasn't been strong enough. I don't believe her story because it makes no sense. When I told her I'd be mentioning this to his wife, she was adamant I don't, as not to make more of it than it is. If it was innocent, what more is there to make? And even if nothing more is going on, I'm not okay with what I just seen. I'm not okay with him rubbing my unborn child in my home without me there. I know it's her body and her choice, but I'm not okay with this. It would be one thing to feel the baby kick, but he was sitting reclined, comfortably on our sofa, rubbing lotion on her, with both leaned into their private conversation. I'm trying really hard to figure out how to express the fact I don't believe her story without causing stress that it'd be dangerous for her or our baby. I don't want to pick a fight with her at this stage of her pregnancy, but at the same time, my mind is spinning and I'm not cool with what happened. Any advice would be appreciated. Now for the top advice before reading the first update. Worst case scenario is she's been cheating with him and it's his baby. Best case, she's naive and really thought having a stranger rub lotion on her stomach right after her husband left for work is okay. Weird, really weird. Edit, definitely tell the neighbor's wife. I'd want to know if I was infertile and my husband was rubbing lotion on another woman's pregnant belly while I was at work. I'm 7 months pregnant and married, and I'm telling you right now. No other man is going to touch my bare belly, especially rub lotion on it. It's too intimate, and I would feel like I'm betraying my husband. Plus, you are right. It's weird. Really weird. 15 weeks pregnant here, and same. Definitely same. Not pregnant, but a man with a big belly, and I too would think it would be weird if my neighbor's husband rubbed lotion on my belly. You need to find out by the other wife what the husband was repairing with your toolbox. Probably BS. Possibly this isn't in the US, but people usually borrow a specific tool, not a toolbox. This is exactly what jumped out at me. Borrow the toolbox sounds like a very made up thing by a woman that doesn't mess with tools. No one needs to borrow a toolbox, they have a specific task they need a specific tool for. Toolbox is BS story, but he should divorce her if she's lending his tools behind his back. You never touch a man's tools. That's a cardinal sin. As this is relationship advice, we're obligated to inform you that paternity testing can now be done prenatally. That's right, you can get a paternity test done at as early as 8 weeks gestation, using only blood from your wife. It's called the NIPP, or Non-Invasive Prenatal Paternity Test. You're welcome. Also, communication, counseling, blah blah blah. Good luck. 
Only her reaction to a paternity test can tell a lot about what's going on, so I second this comment. Now for the first update. I'm only posting this update due to the amount of support I've gotten, as well as the numerous requests to do so. I didn't expect the response I got, and I've unfortunately seen it referenced on other subs, so I'm choosing to confront it. Most of you were right. Congratulations. I read through all of your replies and spoke to friends, and stood for a day. My wife stuck to her story, apologized for making me uncomfortable, and assured me it wouldn't happen again. The guy even decided to leave a handwritten note in the mailbox specifically apologizing as well. I still didn't feel better, and the consensus was that I should speak to my neighbor's wife, who were going to call Sally. So that's what I did. I watched my neighbor leave for work, then called my mother-in-law to come take my wife for a lunch and a girl's date, so she could get out of the house. I left as usual for work, called off again, and went to stay with a friend. Got a text from my wife around noon telling me she was with mother-in-law and would be back by dinner. Went back home and knocked on Sally's door. The guy decided to tell Sally I kicked him out and caused a scene about not wanting either of them speaking to us anymore because I was angry about him helping my wife. Come to find out, both Sally and him have been going over to my house while I was away busy for the past few weeks as my wife had approached her and asked if they would be willing to lend a hand with chores she could no longer do alone. Sometimes Sally went over and did small tasks, or just hung out, sometimes both, sometimes just the guy. Wife told her I knew and was fine with it, and that's why she was confused when her husband told her his BS about me being mad. She showed me where she texted my wife, has her number not mine, to clarify and ask if she was welcome over, and my wife hasn't replied, and since I don't often see Sally or socialize with them, she just assumed her husband was telling the truth. She also admitted that she noticed her husband and my wife becoming fast friends and figured it was due to the pregnancy, but thought it was his way of dealing with their own inability to have kids so she wrote it off. I told her what I walked in on. I told her about the tools, which ended up being BS too. Came to the same conclusions. Both cried. Both hugged for the first time. Both took turns denying and accepting and talking each other down. Took a walk around the block together and conspired. She planned to call her husband at work and say that my wife messaged her, confessing to the two of them having an affair and seeing what happened. Went back to my friends, started having major panic attacks thinking I messed up, that I was about to ruin my marriage, worrying I might be wrong. A bit later and I get a call from my wife screaming at me to find a way to leave work and come home. So I go home. The guy called her telling her what Sally told him. She told me I was crazy, I was a piece of trash, that she was considering leaving me, everything. Having a panic attack thinking I just ruined my entire life over nothing, while also trying to calm her down for the baby's sake, I impulsively told her that if she was leaving, I'd still be requesting a DNA test. And that's when it all came down. Entire tone changed, pleading, begging, apologizing, hyperventilating, holding me, asking me how I found out while denying anything happened. I told her it would be okay and asked if she'd talk to me if we went for a drive. She agreed, took us to a parking lot and we talked. Told her if there was any chance of anything happening, she needed to tell me what was happening, because I already knew a lot. She had slept with him a handful of times before she was pregnant, and our baby might not be ours. He had been coming by and doing daddy duties once in a blue moon, in case it's his, and said they haven't slept together in months. She said we could move away, that it's ours no matter what, and that he had manipulated her. Admitted she lied to Sally to justify him going over for daddy duties. I asked her if she could stay with mother-in-law for a few days while I calmed down. She agreed, took her home, packed up some stuff and dropped her off. I've cleaned out my essentials and I'm in a friend's basement. Friend called her on my behalf and told her that if the baby is mine, I'll be dealing with it. If it isn't, it's on her. But either way I'll be filing for divorce. My friends took my phone from me and deleted my social media. She's been calling my friends and friends told her to get lost. I spoke to my boss and he's been very understanding. Last I heard from Sally, her husband hadn't been home and stopped responding to her calls and texts. I have nothing left. In less than a week, my life has fallen apart. The only thing keeping me here is the small chance that the baby is mine. I have nothing else. I woke up today disappointed I woke up at all. I've never felt this alone. I haven't accepted any of it yet, and I'm praying for the first time in my life that I can stop feeling this way and find strength. More advice before reading the final update. I have nothing else. Respectfully, sir, I disagree. Here's what you have. I spoke to my boss and he's been very understanding. I don't know where you work, but where I come from, most bosses would tell me to man up and leave that crap at the door. Not everyone has an understanding boss like that man. You've got a treasure, learn to value it. I'm in a friend's basement. Friend called her on my behalf. 
you've got a great friend who would share his or her home with you just because. I can guarantee to you that not everyone is like that. Also, the friend called her on your behalf. Not many friends would want to get involved in that kind of drama. Friend's an absolutely solid person. My friends took my phone from me and deleted my social media. She's been calling my friends. Friends told her to get lost. Now you have a small army. It might be small, but it's certainly made up of loyal elites. Of friends to help you through this process. Not everyone can say the same. So bro, you aren't alone. You don't have nothing. You still have your job. A job with an understanding boss. A good friend. Friends who take your side. You have everything a man could ever want. So chin up my guy and go grab that bull by its horns. Life may look like a black hole right now, but it is always darkest right before the dawn. You know what else OP has? The freaking moral high ground. The knowledge that whatever is going on, it's not anything that he did wrong or didn't do. He got screwed over by other people, but can hold his head high. It was incredibly brave of you to confront this, and very kind to let us know. One day at a time dude, one day at a time. Next up, prenatal paternity test. But wow, I don't see this marriage surviving even if it's yours. Hugs. If you see this OP, focus on yourself going forward. One tiny silver lining is that, your wife showed her true colors before you are decades into a family that might not have even been yours. There's lots of grieving to do with all this loss, but know you'll be a better person for having the chance to start a real family with someone who you can trust. Good luck man. The marriage should not survive. It's toxic. I'm usually all for working things out between a married couple. I hate divorce and think it's the easy, lazy option most of the time. But if your wife is pregnant and doesn't know whose baby it is, is allowing her husband to get excited, tell his family and friends, get his head wrapped around being a dad, and it's all a lie. Zero chance this woman should be trusted. This isn't small stuff. This is a new life. Now for the final update. Don't know if anyone will remember my original posts, but I'm still getting messages on a regular basis for an update, so this is the final one. Extremely long story made slightly less long. A week after my last update, my soon-to-be ex-wife had our child, which I was at the hospital for. And I'm the father. The first few weeks after my last update were extremely difficult, with family and friends on both sides adding to the drama. Thankfully, I've had an overwhelming amount of support from not only from the vast majority of people I know in my personal life, but from all of you as well. My wife and I agreed to sit down and discuss things after she was discharged, in my friend's basement and with my friend upstairs in case I needed the support. She came over and we basically said everything we needed to say. I exploded and said a lot of mean things, most of which I regret, some I don't. She spent the whole time apologizing and begging me to take her back and give our family a chance to survive everything that happened. Went on for about an hour like this until I accepted that there was nothing left to say and I have zero romantic love for her anymore and she accepted that we need to focus on our daughter above all else. We're agreeing to figure out a custody split amicably and to eventually co-parent more actively together when wounds heal. But our marriage is over. She has the potential to be a wonderful mother, but she failed me as a wife and my sole focus right now is how to get myself mentally to where I need to be to be the best father possible. We plan to eventually sell the home, but right now I'm staying in an apartment. Sally is leaving her husband too. He's apparently staying with his mother and still refused to speak to Sally directly. According to her, the last thing that was passed along to her is that he understands what he did, he's sorry he hurt her, he loves her, and won't contest a divorce. She's struggling to handle everything and lacks a support system, so we're developing a friendship. Mostly two wounded people leaning on each other, and I'm doing my best. She plans to start therapy too. And no, I don't plan to be anything more than platonic friends with Sally. Lovely woman, but no. I still haven't fully processed my new role as a parent. I think mentally I already convinced myself my child wouldn't be mine in case it ended up that way. I plan to take classes and spend more time with my daughter doing early bonding. I'm terrified but very happy. I know there's a lot left to do and a lot of hurting left to go through. But I'm stable and a dad. That's what matters most. There's something about the audacity of cheaters parading their affair partners in front of their spouses or partners that is so much more anger-inducing than your usually clandestine affair. I'm not sure why. My brother's soon-to-be ex-wife had an affair with a guy who was my brother's then best friend. 1. Apparently she'd always had a crush on a fair partner. Then why date my brother, marry him, and have kids with him? 2. Evil sister-in-law and a fair partner conducted much of this affair at my brother's and hers at the time, apartment, under the lie that she was taking care of a fair partner after he had a procedure done, and while a fair partner's wife was at work. 
Plus, there's the horrifying nature of them to conduct it in a small apartment that always had my young nieces present. 3. Extra creepy detail. Evil sister-in-law was the maid of honor for a fair partner's wife in their wedding, only a few months before crazy sister-in-law admitted to the affair. Oh, and a fair partner's wife was the maid of honor at my brother and evil sister-in-law's wedding as well. Bonkers. 4. Evil sister-in-law soon got pregnant with a fair partner's kid, and now lives with him and his wife, and their combined three children. I actually don't feel bad for a fair partner's wife because she apparently only became close friends again with ex-sister-in-law for free childcare. I kinda think she was aware of the whole affair and approved of it. I think they might be polygamous, but lacking any sense of healthy boundaries or care for other people. It's an infuriating situation that almost ended my brother. He didn't sleep for over a month. I constantly worried that he'd die in a car crash or workplace accident. My poor nieces, years on, don't always cope well with the implosion of their birth family. Divorce has dragged on for two and a half years. There are other bonkers details, but I'm running on. Anyway, it took a long time to not want to scream at her when I saw her. I still get that impulse sometimes. Dear potential cheaters, can you at least avoid your spouse's siblings, parents, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and so on? Love the people who have to pick up the pieces in the wake of deceitfulness and betrayal. My cousin ended himself when he found out his wife and lifelong best friend had been having an affair almost their entire marriage. I still wonder if their two kids are his, but I don't speak to that side of the family. They'd lie anyway. What a mess. I'm glad OP stood his ground. Boundaries are important, and so is respect. I almost wished it wasn't his child so he can get a clean break. Must have been very difficult to still proceed with the divorce knowing you have a newborn to raise together. Same here, it's almost unfair for OP. On the flip side though, neighbor has been technically rubbing OP's child in his ex-wife's belly all this time. Creepy in hindsight, 